Hello, it's Ryan from 2MinuteTennis.net, and in this video, I'm going to show you a few things you can learn from the Serena Williams topspin forehand. Now, the first thing, notice her wide stance, right? Her feet are more than shoulder width apart. Her knees are bent. She's ready to go in any direction, right? If her opponent hit a drop shot, she'd be able to sprint forward. So many recreational players I watch, they don't even look ready while the opponent is hitting the ball, right? You've got to be able to move in any direction. So be athletic in your ready position with your body, ready to explode anywhere to get your opponent shot. The second thing, when you take your racket back, Make sure that the racket head is above your hand. So you can actually see, right? Her racket is a Wilson. Why? How do we know that, right? We can see it on the strings. So the tip of her racket is pointing up. Her racket head is above her hand, her hitting hand. And I also want you to notice how she has her left hand going with the racket. So turn and take your racket back in your unit turn. Take your racket back with both hands. When you do that, you coil, you get a nice oblique stretch, and you can even uncoil more like ferociously into the forehand. So take the racket back. You can see when she finally lets go with her left hand, her left arm is parallel to the net. Again, the tip of the racket right now pointing up. This is actually what you call point your strings to the crowd. If you look at her strings, her strings are facing off to her right. So when you take your racket back, do it with both hands and point your strings to the crowd. The second thing, or I should say the third thing, is when you drop your racket, make sure that you drop the racket down in the back, but that you close the face, right? So we want to drop the racket down below contact, but I want you to look at her racket face. Her strings are pointing down. This is vital, right? I would say two to three times a week, I do private Zoom lessons for players, um, and I would say two of those out of three are forehand lessons for people. This is where people send me videos of their technique and we do a private Zoom class together and I compare their technique to the pros. I would say 50% of all topspin problems on players' forehands is because their racket is straight up and down, right? When you see Serena's racket is severely closed. I don't care what grip you have on your forehand, right? Because you look at Federer, he's got an Eastern and he closes his racket face just as much. You have to close your racket face for a consistent topspin on your forehand. When your strings face down prior to hitting the ball, then when you swing up, your strings will face forward. The way to ensure that your strings face forward at contact is to have your strings facing down prior to contact. That way, when you swing up and you brush up the back of the ball, then the ball spins, but it doesn't go way up. The players who struggle with topspin, who have their racket straight up and down, the amateur players who have their racket straight up and down, when they get to the ball, the racket is always wide open. And then the strings are facing way up and the ball goes over the fence or they have to roll the racket to try to get the strings to face forward. So if you're struggling with consistency on your forehand, when you drop the racket down in the back, for ra gravity-assisted racket speed, close the face, tilt the strings down. Then you'll be willing to swing up, brushing up the back of the ball, getting that ball to spin with top spin. And it's awesome when you see that ball go over the net and just dip down into the court. Now, when she was dropping the racket, she was also clearing her left hand out of the way. But I want you to notice how it doesn't drop, right? It doesn't go super low. Let's pretend that she is in the shallow end of a pool. And so here is the water, right? Here's the water. I want you to notice as she moves, she's not getting her hand wet. So her left hand is not dunking down into the water. Her right hand is, her racket gets into the water, right? So she's in the shallow end of a pool right now. So her left hand stayed dry. Most amateur players who struggle turning their hips into a ball. If you've ever been told like, oh, you got to turn your hips, you got to rotate. It's because this hand drops and it gets wet. Keep your non-hitting hand dry. Keep it out of the water. And in fact, you'll see as she swings up, watch her left hand, her non-hitting hand rise. So if we take a circle where her left hand is here prior to contact, and now at contact and just after contact, look where her left hand is. Your left hand or your, your non-hitting hand should be rising 
as you are striking the ball. This is what you see Azarenka do. This is what you see Del Potro do and, and Dominic Team, Roger Federer. This is what they do. They raise their non-hitting hand up to contact. So the non-hitting hand is rising as the racket is approaching. That is so important because it allows for hip turn. If this non-hitting hand drops, it becomes a counterweight. The hitting hand goes forward. The non-hitting hand goes back and you cannot turn your hips. So you have to be raising your non-hitting hand as you're contacting. Now, let's look at her head during contact. This is remarkable. This is usually what you see Federer doing, where she's looking down, right? She's keeping her head still, but watch how her head still is down until her chin and her shoulder touch. If you want to work on keeping your head super still as you're striking the ball, Keep your head still until your shoulder comes up and hits your chin. That's a good indicator that you kept your head super still. Your head pound for pound is the heaviest part of your body. So if you are keeping your head super still, you're going to make sure that your head is not messing up your shot. And then last, I want you to notice how she catches the racket. This is so, so awesome for for amateur players to practice this and and to copy this. I want you to catch the racket with your non-hitting hand higher than eye level. So we put a line at eye level and her hands are higher than eye level. Why do you want to do that? Because it accentuates the upward swing. You see her racket's going out of the screen. Many amateur players their swing gets very level after they hit the ball. Like they're willing to swing up to contact, but then it goes very level. The pros, their racket, it goes steeper up after contact than prior to contact. The swing gets steeper up. That just, again, promotes that top spin that you're putting on the ball. And because her head stayed super still, her head is still looking down at the contact. She rotated her hips into the shot, catching the racket higher than her head to make sure that her left hand was raising or rising as she caught, as she hit the ball. Let's just go over this again. I absolutely love her forehand when it comes to amateurs copying it. There's so many players I wouldn't recommend on the pro tour who you try to copy, but Serena is definitely one of the players you should copy. So athletic stance, split step, look ready in your ready position. Turn with both hands. Notice her racket head is right next to her head. That is called two heads are better than one, right? Keep the racket head up as you take it back with both hands. Your non-hitting hand should be parallel to the baseline right now. I'm sorry. Well, same thing, but parallel to the net. Drop the racket down below the ball. And as you drop the racket down, close the face. And as you're doing that, move your non-hitting hand out of the way, but don't drop it. Keep it up. You'll start to rotate your hips into the shot, brushing low to high as you hit. Your head should stay super still. Notice her non-hitting hand is rising as she is striking the ball. Strings are facing forward at contact because she closed, keeping her head super still, and she catches the racket over her shoulder. People say, catching the racket has no value. And I say, you're right. But catching your racket, make sure you do the things that give you value, which is swinging up as you hit and raising your non-hitting hand. So catching the racket is an easy way to make sure you do those two things. If you copy Serena Williams' forehand, there's no doubt you're going to gain confidence, win more matches, and play much better tennis. This is Ryan Reedy from 2MinuteTennis.net. You got this.